Stephen Kinnock. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, and it's such a pleasure to uh, follow my uh, colleague for uh, Pontypris. She's uh, made a real uh, impact since uh, coming to Parliament just uh, some months ago, and in addition to that, is uh, in the process of organising the Welsh PLP Social, which is uh, um, an absolutely uh, excellent role and task. I'm very glad she's taken it on, for which she is perfectly qualified. Um, <laughs> But I wanted to just look forward to this year and say uh, that I think that 2020 promises to be a truly memorable year, not because it will be the first year of this Tory government, far from it, but rather because having waited 58 years uh, to reach a major tournament, uh, as we did in 2016, uh, the Welsh football team is now, just like a London bus, uh, back at the Euros. Uh, but it does make us, uh, we should cast our minds back to 2016 and what a summer that was. Great memories. Who can forget Gareth Bales' free kicks against Slovakia and England, particularly? Uh, or Hal Robson Carnu's Cruyff turn in the comeback win over Belgium en route to the semi finals? Euro 2020 uh, may just be even more extraordinary and unforgettable, and I certainly hope so. But the summer of 2016 uh, typified uh, what it means to be Welsh, a proud nation punching above its weight, with everybody coming together. It, it really was summed up by the team's motto, together, stronger. Over the last few weeks, as Wales has been buffeted by some truly terrible weather, first with Storm Chiara and then uh, Dennis, together, stronger has been really appropriate. More than a month's worth of rain fell in just 48 hours, and despite being left to fend for ourselves, as usual, by the part-time Prime Minister and the Tory government, communities across Wales really stepped up to the plate. I'd like to pay tribute to them and to our wonderful emergency services and brilliant council workforces who've been working tirelessly in these challenging circumstances. We've always been tough and resilient in Wales. But we are experiencing more and more extreme weather, and these events bring into sharper focus the need to do more to address the climate and environmental crisis that we're facing. But out of every crisis should come an opportunity, an opportunity for Britain to lead the world on renewable energies. The Swansea Bay Tidal Lagoon would have provided heat to thousands of homes with clean, green, clean reliable and sustainable energy saving almost a quarter of a million tonnes of carbon during each year of its operation. If this government is serious about tackling climate change, it should reconsider the opportunity and back this game-changer for the industry. What an opportunity to level up the country, as the Prime Minister likes to put it, by putting the Swansea Bay area at the forefront of this clean, green energy technology. But the reality is that whilst this Tory, Tory government talks a good game on caring about Wales, they're not willing to put their money where their mouth is. Just look at rail electrification to Swansea. In 2016, the then Secretary of State for Wales gave a categorical commitment on national TV to me to electrify the line to Swansea. It was even a Tory manifesto commitment in 2017, but it's fallen foul to one of those famous, infamous, I should say, Tory U-turns. The entire budget for electrifying the main line to Swansea would be less than 1% of the vast sums that will be spent on HS2. So will the Secretary of State do what his predecessors have failed to do and stand up for Wales by committing to electrifying the main line to Swansea? But this is not just about rail infrastructure. For decades, wealth, power, opportunity and talent have been agglomerating in our major cities at the expense of industrial, rural and coastal areas. To truly rebalance our economy, or level up as they like to say, we need the government to back a modern manufacturing renaissance, starting in places like Aberavon. Part of this package must be a sector deal for steel. Steel is a 21st century industry and is integral to our everyday lives, to transport, to infrastructure, to our defence industry. It underpins our entire manufacturing base. HS2 will use 2 million tonnes of steel and is a real opportunity for the government to back British steel through a patriotic approach to procurement. And the government needs to strike a sector deal for steel if it is going to foster growth. Automotive, aerospace and construction all have sector deals. Why does the steel industry not have one? 
Action on energy prices is essential. UK steelmakers are paying prices that are double that of our German competitors and 50% higher than in France. So UK steelmakers are fighting with one hand tied behind their backs. Industrial towns also really need clarity on replacing EU funding. The UK Shared Prosperity Fund, and I'm proud to chair the APPG on that, is set to replace EU funding, but has taken on a near mythical status. What's happened to the promised consultation? Everything about the fund is still to be worked out and the clock is ticking down every day towards the 1st of January 2021. What is certain is the fund must not be used by the government to row back on the devolution settlement yeah. or to shortchange communities like Potolva by a sleight of hand in Westminster. Yeah. Yeah. The government must guarantee not a penny less and not a power lost, and it is the duty of the Secretary of State to be a strong voice for Wales on this issue. The Welsh Government must also give Wales a voice in the EU trade negotiations. The First Minister today made clear that the Government's negotiating position would also almost certainly result in a loss of jobs in Wales and a diminishment of livelihoods. That he made it clear that there has been no consultation on the UK's negotiating mandate and we are not represented in the talks. Labour is a proud party of devolution. But devolution only works if the UK Government respects the devolution principle. The Welsh Government has suffered a decade of diminishing budgets. Even with the previous Chancellor's extra <coughs> 600 million for Wales, the Welsh Government's budget for 2021 will be £300 million lower in real terms than it was in 2010 2011. As a result, my council, Neath Potolbert Council, has had to remove more than £80 million from its budget since 2010 and is expected to find a further £42 million of cuts between now and 2023. Despite the sterling efforts of Welsh Government and Welsh Councils to shield our communities from the worst of the cuts, my constituents have suffered due to the Conservatives' dismissive attitude towards Wales. They are quick to devolve blame, slow to devolve resources. The first step must be to junk the Barnet formula and to replace it with a fair funding formula for Wales. Mr Deputy Speaker, 2010, 2020 also marks 35 years since the end of the miners' strike, something that will be marked in mining communities across Wales and in coalfields communities across the UK too. During that strike, we saw the true meaning of community spirit, and that has not left us, and it never will. As the grandson of a coal miner, that never-say-die attitude and commitment to local community has been passed down through the generations, and it is with that spirit that I will continue to fight for Aberavon in Westminster. My Aberavon constituents deserve better than what is being offered from the current UK Government. They need a Government that delivers on its promises to Wales and recognises the potential of our fantastic, vibrant and talented communities. We in Wales know that together we are stronger, and it's high time the UK Government realised that too. Dioch and happy Sunday.